Okay, guys. Um, I wanted to show you uh, some stuff that I bought, some stuff that sold, and then we are going to ship the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about shipping some pretty heavy, bulky items, um, an electronic item, a smaller but fragile item. So um, we'll get into that in a minute, and that's going to be a process, and it's probably going to be a long video because of it, but I just want to show you how I do that. And then let's just jump in. I'll show you what's sold to. I don't know. I might have said that, but I'm saying it again now. Anyway, I, I bought this tub full of what I, I think are film developing, like darkroom supplies, basically. Um, and I don't know a lot about darkroom supplies other than they go in a darkroom. Anyway. I paid $15.99 for it, but this timer sells for about $30, so I figured I'd take a risk and see if the other items um, might be worth it. So, um, I I got these. These probably aren't worth that much, but they're tongs that you use with film, you know, with the paper. But anyway, um, this is a, this is called a Magnesite. And this goes for about 10 bucks, 10 or 15 bucks. Um, this lens that goes, it's an enlarger kind of lens. And they actually had this enlarger at the place. I should have bought it. It was $30. But it was going to be huge, hard to ship, really hard to ship. And with it being camera equipment, I, I was just was hesitant. Curiosity may get the best of me and I may go back and buy it. But... This lens is for that in larger, and this will go for about $45. And then um, there were a set of these paddles, and these are for holding negatives. And uh, they open up like this. But yeah, they're for holding negatives, and I think I could probably get about 20 bucks for the the three of those. So I should do pretty well on this $15 lot. There was also some like film developer, uh, but I don't know if I'll try to sell that or not because I'm not sure what kind of chemicals are in that. So bought that. Um, I bought this DVD recorder. It is not in very good condition. I don't even know if you can see that, but it's pretty knocked around on the top. I am going to clean it up really good, but it's got some scratches. These sell for about $50. Um, I don't have the remote for this one. And again, like I said, it is kind of beat around. I'm going to try and get 30 or 35 for this. And, um, I paid $5.99 for it. Uh, I bought these the other day and forgot to show you these. These are Crate and Barrel Kala, um, cereal bowls. I bought four of them. They were 99 cents each. I have these listed for $44.99. Crate and Barrel is a really good brand. They have very classic designs, and they're very desirable. I think they're German. I think they are, yeah, German. So um, if you see Crate and Barrel, look it up. I bought this dude. He's kind of cool, but I can't seem to get him to fully function because I think his head is supposed to move and light up and that sort of thing, but he does talk. He will tell you the time. Um, it's a clock radio. It's called Mr. Clock Radio. And it he's kind of fun. I paid $6.99 for him. Yeah. I paid $6.99 for him. And um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get much back on him since he's not working fully functional. But I'm going to try and sell him as he is. You know, maybe $20. Bucks, maybe $15. I don't know. Um... I bought this cool Sony transistor radio. Check that out. And um, it's a weather radio. You know, got, it's got a little strap. It's in good condition. I paid five bucks for it. I think I can get about 30 or 35 bucks for it. Um, I bought this against my better judgment. It doesn't have any name brands. Um, it's made in China, and it is missing a rhinestone right here in the middle. But it's the middle one, and it's hardly noticeable. Um, 
great detail on the end, this metal detail, great chain strap, and it's got kind of a kind of a wrap sort of um, um, handle. I thought it was bamboo at first, but you know, what do I know? I can't see. And then opens up to just a cute little purse. I paid $6.99 for it. I may have overpaid. I don't know. But this is one of those things where I just wanted to buy this purse. So I bought it. And then um, I've got these guys. So I paid $14.99 for the three of these. And these are made by Inesco, but they're Disney branded. They're called Disney Traditions. And they are like marked. And here's this one. This one recently sold for about $18. I'm going to, they all three have their tags. Um, I'm going to wipe them down a little bit because they look like they've been sitting in somebody's shelf for a long time. I'm going to wipe them down a little bit. I'm going to try not to break them because you know how I've been breaking stuff lately. And I'm going to see if I can lot these together for 50 bucks and um, plus shipping and see what I can get for these guys. But, you know, Tinkerbell is just, Tinkerbell is just cute subject matter. She is um, sought after and, uh, you know, I just thought she'd do okay. So that's what I bought. Oh, one more thing. Hmm, one more. And I always tell you guys to go outside your comfort zone, which is what I did with that uh, dark room equipment that I bought. I don't know much about that stuff, but I had a feeling, I, well, I knew from the timer I was going to get my money back and I thought, you know, maybe, um, maybe this will be worth buying. So I bought this and this is a trunk for a Vespa Piaggio and you're like, Sarah, what's a Vespa Piaggio? Well, picture it, Sicily, 1992. A young girl with big sunglasses and her hair in a scarf is roaming the streets of Palermo on her motorized scooter with a belly full of pasta and a heart full of love. That young girl was me, and that motorized scooter was a, a Vespa Piaggio. Anyway. Um, it is an Italian scooter. You've seen them in all the Italian movies. I believe it was a Vespa that um, that Audrey Hepburn was riding in uh, Roman Holiday. I'm pretty sure that it was. But anyway, this is the trunk. And it does have some condition issues. You can see how the plastic's kind of faded. Um, it's got some bumps and bruises. But I paid $5.99 for this. And I think that uh, after I do some research and figure out which model this is, um, I think I'll probably do okay on this. Um, I'm guessing somewhere between $30 and, you know, $150, but who really knows? Who really knows? I just want to open this up and make sure there's not like a human head or something in there. Nope. Um, looks like this is the bolt that bolts it down to the Vespa. And I like that it's got the, the, the key in the lock. I mean, structurally, it's in really good condition. Uh, but you can see it's got these little grooves here that you slide on and bolt it on. And again, I don't know exactly what that's going to be worth, but I think I'm going to do okay on it. So let's talk about a few things that sold. And for whatever reason, people are blowing up my eBay messages um, and I don't know why. I just got three messages from somebody in a row. So, um, sold this. I probably paid a couple of bucks for it. It's a Midland Weather Radio. Uh, does have the ACDC cord. I sold this for $22.99. Uh, sold this lot of brooches. This is just excess jewelry that I got in some big lots. There are seven of these in here, and I sold them at auction, and they had to go through a couple of times, I'll be real honest, to run the auction a couple of times, but I'm trying to use up those free auctions that I get, um, that I get through having my store anyway, which I don't know how many that is now that I've upgraded to a premium store. 
but um, I'm trying to use those because that's just a good business practice to use the items, like to use all the tools they give you. But anyway, there's an example of one of these. There are seven brooches. I sold them for $4.99 plus shipping. I am waiting for them to pay because it's an auction and I hope that they do that here shortly. Um, this is made by Sony. It's called a Sony Clie. It's basically a Palm Pilot. And um, I had this for a long time. I just couldn't get it to sell. Finally, it sold at auction for $5.99. I think I paid a dollar for it. This is called an Avon cassette 8-track tape um, adapter. So this would go in your 8-track player. See, it's got that shape. You put that in, and you could put a cassette tape in here and play cassettes. Um, I paid a dollar for this and sold it for $19.99 plus shipping for a total of $27. And this took probably three, three months to sell. I also sold this Sony Walkman. Um, this is the car adapter. So it's got the cassette that you put in your, I don't know. That's kind of funny that both of these sold one to adapt it from a track to cassette one to adapt it from cassette to CD player. But um, I think I paid a dollar or two for this as well. And this sold today for $24.99 plus shipping for a total of $32.19. And then the other two things that have sold this weekend, and it's still early, you know, I still get sales, are actually over here. And let me show you those. So let's go right over here and look. This is a Farberware convection oven that um, I bought for $14.99. I just listed this like a week or so ago, and I really neglected listing it because I've had it for three weeks probably. Neglected listing it because I'm like, man, I don't want to ship that. And guess what? It sold, and they paid about... $40 shipping for this. This, uh, again, $14.99 purchase. This uh, sold for $125.99. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to ship this. And then the other thing that sold was this Sony 5-disc changer. It's a home um, theater system. I think I paid around $10 for this, and it sold for $59.99 plus shipping. I'm going to show you how to ship that, as, how I'm going to ship that as well. And then... The other thing that I'm going to show you um, is the Bronco rotisserie that sold Thursday. Um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to ship that as well. And the reason that is not shipped already, because I had plans to ship that on Saturday, um, is because my daughter thought she went into labor on Saturday morning, so I spent most of the morning at the hospital and didn't get around to shipping it. But that's why I love two days handling time, so I should be fine and um, we'll get that shipped out today. So let me get things set up and I'm gonna show you some of the products that I have uh, on hand purchased, some that I purchased, some that are on hand, that I'm gonna use to, process, uh, to go through this process. So um, just hang tight with me. So let's talk about some of the items that I have or I have purchased to ship these items. And before you guys wig out on me, not, not most of you will, but some of you will, and say, I never buy boxes. I never buy packing materials. I always recycle. Good, good. I think that's good. And um, I encourage that. I encourage recycling. Um, but for these particular items, I decided that I wanted to buy some things that I have got the craziest hair. Heavens. Anyway, um, for these particular items, I decided that I would spend some extra money to, um, to ship them. Remember that the three items that I am shipping, I have $30 in, and they have sold for $220 something, some, somewhere around there, plus shipping. So I'm okay, for me, I'm fine with spending some extra money to you know, increase the uh, chance that these will reach the um, buyer without damage. 
if you want to use recycled boxes, if you want to go use recycled uh, bubble wrap, whatever, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I used to use recycled boxes. I used to go in dumpsters uh, at the electronics store and pull out styrofoam. I'm completely fine with that. I'm just showing you how I'm going to do this. So, um, you know, that being said, I'm, you know, let's move on. So, uh, something I like to do, and this is me personally, this is definitely not necessary, but I just like the way it looks and I, it gives me added sense of security is I like to use stretch wrap. So, um, for example, after I have taken care of these items that are inside this oven, I am going to stretch wrap this entire oven. And I'm going to do that so that it protects the, the surface against scratches and that kind of thing. Um, you do not have to do this. This is not a necessity, but I wrap all of my electronics. Um, anything that I'm worried about breaking, uh, glass items, um, that big um, picture that I, that I shipped in my last video, the big glass carousel horse, I wrapped in this. And let me tell you the reason I like to do that. Of course, I put um, cardboard like against the glass on either side and I stretch wrapped it. But that way, if that breaks, it's kind of in a plastic bag, so it's not all over the packaging. Um, it will help prevent that glass from just being loose in the box. So um, that's one of the reasons I do those kind of things. But I will stretch wrap this as well. This is not going to be fun to stretch wrap because it's, it's bulky and it's heavy, but it'll be fine. I'll handle that. Um, so I'll, I'll use that. Uh, of course, you're going to need tape tape guns for this process as well. You will need a um, box cutter or utility knife or some kind of cutting utensil. Um, for these kinds of items, I always use the bigger bubble wrap. I showed this before. This is, these are bigger bubbles. Um, for extra cushion, this is available. Buy this at Home Depot. I pay 20 bucks for it. Uh, there's probably other places that you can buy it online, but uh, for me, th this price is fine. Um, the quality of this is pretty good. The only thing I don't like about it is like the perforations tear really easily. So sometimes I tear the, the bubble wrap apart, putting it around something. But um, I'm going to use bubble wrap. And then um, I bought at Home Depot, while I was there, two heavy duty boxes. These are, these are thick and they're going to add some weight to the items, but I should still be okay. Um, this will keep me from having to double block, box these two items. So um, this one cost, I think, $1.50. I'm, I'm going to use this one for that Ronco rotisserie. This one cost about three bucks. This is a really, really big one. This one cost about three bucks or give or take, maybe a little bit more for this um, oven, but I don't have to worry about the box damaging. It's a nice thick box. And then the last thing I bought is, this is um, insulation. This is, let me see if I open this. I paid $8 and change for this, but this is, is sheets of styrofoam that I'm going to use to insulate the box um, that I'm going to put this cooker in, this oven in. And um, this will give me actually better support, better um, protection than bubble wrap because this will not collapse. Bubble wrap, if you drop the box sometimes the wrong way, um, the bubbles will pop. This won't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put my box together. I'm going to cut some of this to fit the box. And I'm going to um, wrap the items inside this oven. And I will be right back with you. I've got this oven stretch wrapped. And I took the two shelves and the, um, the tray and the the manual that were inside and I just stretched wrapped those together and stuck them back in the bottom and they're in there pretty securely so they shouldn't flop around in shipping. So I've got this stretch wrapped and I'm happy with that and then I cut some of that styrofoam 
and I've lined the bottom. So I'm going to set this down in the thing and it's called a box. I'm going to set this down in the box and then I'm going to work to put um, styrofoam around it and on the end. And um, if I've got enough room, I may put another layer of styrofoam in the bottom just because I know that the ends, the, the, the smaller ends, are there going to be the um, the surfaces that this is going to be dropped on, um, loading it in and out. I got dirty. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and work on that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, I did have to stuff a piece of paper in here because the corner was kind of empty, uh, but I, and I did that. But um, I've got a couple of layers of styrofoam all the way around this, and... Uh, I feel like this should probably be pretty well protected. Um, it just fit in this box, which is good. This is going to be really heavy. I hope I charged enough shipping. Right. Um, and then I will admit that the styrofoam is messy to deal with. So imagine breaking up a styrofoam cooler in your living room. Hmm. So I wouldn't want to do this in a room where I had shag carpets or, you know, something like that. Um, I've got vinyl floors in here, so it's no big deal to clean up. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And um, I'm going to seal this box up. And we'll get on working. And we'll get on working on the next one. But I think I've got this one pretty much secure. Of course, of course, buy additional insurance um, when your purchase price exceeds the... Um, the insurance that you're given for um, your item. I hope this can go priority. I don't know what that's going to do to the cost, but I'll try and um, get insurance for it anyway. So anyway, I'll be right back. So check this out. It doesn't happen to me all the time. Sometimes I'm off a little bit one way or the other. Um, but my shipping dimensions and my shipping weight were spot on. So the buyer ended up paying $47.96 for the shipping. And um, when I added the insurance, it ended up being $51.90. Um, but that was for parcel select, so that's UPS ground. What I decided to do, and you could do this if you want, you don't have to if you don't want to, was I upgraded them to priority for $3 more. So... They will get this a lot faster. I'm hoping that it won't get treated as poorly. And, um, you know, um, it's three bucks. So I I'm fine with doing that. Now, on big items like this, I do want to point out, um, I used almost all of that styrofoam, but not all of it. I probably, I probably spent, let's say, $12 on shipping materials for this item. But I knew that when I priced it, and I'm still okay. $14.99, uh, they bought it for $125. Um, the, um, what you can do, um, it's perfectly acceptable, is when you are pricing an item like this and you know that the shipping materials are going to be costly, you can go ahead and charge a handling fee for having to go through um, packing something like this and buying those extra materials. But I just want to point that out. I didn't do that. I'm fine without do, you know, with not doing that. Um, maybe that's uh, maybe that's something I should look at. But, but for right now, I'm fine doing it this way because I still made a heck of a lot of profit on this one item that sold in about a week um, that I sourced at Goodwill. So anyway, let's get to the next thing. Okay, so we're going to go to this rotisserie. Not quite as big, not as bulky. Um, and the only concern is this uh, glass door that, that folds in like that. Um, I am going to go in and wrap this stuff up because this sound when a, a buyer gets a package is disconcerting before they've opened it. Um, it sounds like things are broken. So I'm going to take care of um, wrapping up the tray in the basket here and securing 
this in um, in the gloves. And then I'm going to stretch wrap this entire unit. I will be right back with you. I have this um, stuff stretch, stretch wrap. I have bagged the gloves, put my business card in there. And now I'm going to just stuff a little paper inside there to keep things from rattling around too much. And yes, shipping these things is time consuming and it is not for everybody. Um, you know, not everybody wants to spend this much time on a $30 item or a $33 item. Um, and quite frankly, I don't always either, but this again was fast, easy money. This wasn't something that was listed for three days, three days, three months. Um, I didn't sit on it for a long time. I think this sold the same day that I listed it. So I'm willing to go ahead and take the time. And this probably will end up taking me about 20 minutes or so to ship, maybe 30 just depends on, you know, if I'm having a hard time handling it while I'm wrapping it. But um, again, it's not for everybody, um, but I don't mind these kind of challenges. Let me just say, I don't eat, like I don't seek out things that are kind of hard to ship. Um, and I don't, you know, when they sell, I'm not like, yippee, I'm going to have to ship that. I, I mean, I don't love doing this, but I don't mind it. And um if that makes, if that opens up another market to me of products that other people will overlook or pass over because they don't want to ship them, then I'm, I'm okay with doing that. So, um, and actually making this video is actually helping me because a lot of the time I'm a procrastinator and I would wait till the very last minute to ship the things that I don't want to ship as much. So actually, because I'm making this video for you, I'm actually shipping these um, before, like before the deadline, before they have to ship. So anyway, um, let me get this stretch wrap and I'm going to bubble wrap it and then I will come back and show you what I've done. I got my um, rotisserie all wrapped up and I'm not going to show you the electronic that I was going to show you because basically the process is exactly the same as this. I did buy a box for that one. Um, I'm going to cut a box down to fit that one, but um, exactly the same process. Shrink wrap it, not shrink wrap it. Um, that requires heat. Stretch wrap it, uh, bubble wrap it so that you cannot feel the corners, and then uh, put it in a box. And I might use a little paper to pad this, but other than that, this is ready to go. So I hope that some of these shipping tutorials help you. Um, maybe not be afraid of shipping some of the bigger bulkier items and um or they show you everything that you want to know about shipping and you decide that you don't want to deal with those bigger bulkier items but i'm going to throw this in a, a box get the rest of my ship my stuff my stuff shipped and um i will see you guys maybe tomorrow or some other time but until then just remember that the dream works when you do so keep dreaming and keep working and i'll see you the next time